wins her sixth singles title, a record 66 singles matches with husband John looking on. She will hold up the trophy that only Mala Mallory and Helen Wills Moody have won more times. Now, John McEnroe was trying for his fourth in a row, but you can't do what he did and survive against Yvonne Lendl, who was long all the time. It would turn into a 6-4, 6-4, 7-6 defeat for Mac. In the third set tiebreaker, Lendl saved one. McEnroe had a chance to blow him out on this point, but he went the wrong way with it. Lendl came from down 5-2 in the tiebreaker, one at 8-6, set up his 10th meeting with Jimmy Connors. Now, Jimbo gave a new meaning to the scene, eating on the run, baked tennis ball a la court. <laughs> uh, bad joke, but not as bad as the one Connors played on Vios. Beat him in game eight of the third set, took the match, 6-1, 3-6, 6, one, three, six, six, two, six Three. Connors and Lendl, 90 grand in open title tomorrow. Tomorrow, page from Joe Piscopo is Saturday Night Live. Dolphins, Jets, Jinx, tomorrow, Channel 4, 4 p.m., opener, no strike yet. Giants, Atlanta, Meadowlands, Bartkowski, Bruner, maybe Rutledge, maybe scoreless tie, maybe time to go back other style. It might have surprised some people, but this may finally be the year of the Gators. The University of Florida beat Miami last week and moved into the number 11 spot in the polls this afternoon to beat number 10 Southern Cal 17-9. Following a fumble, the Gators went on a 40-yard march. Wayne Peace hit Spencer Jackson in the second quarter. Beautiful catch. Caught three on that drive, by the way. And then last week's hero, James Jones, capped the 97-yard adventure. A 22-yard touchdown run to the right corner. 79, Florida holds on, beats USC. Charlie Pell's boys continue to rise in the polls. Let us go to our scores. Pittsburgh didn't play today, but Washington slammed Texas all pass on Nebraska over Iowa. Alabama, no upset this year. Georgia Tech fell. And North Carolina played Pitt. They were idle today. It was Georgia beating Brigham Young by three with a 111 to go, a field goal. Penn State just got by Maryland. SMU slammed too late. West Virginia in Norman, Oklahoma. Big upset. They beat Oklahoma. It was Southern Cal losing to Florida, as you saw. Michigan over Wisconsin, 20-9. Arkansas shut out Tulsa. We've got Ohio State beating Baylor. 10-6 Utah is in front of Arizona State, and that could be a big upset. Clemson didn't play. Texas took the day off. Long Beach State lost to UCLA. Miami, Florida easily over Houston and Notre Dame. We'll play next week. Now, the second I get back to town, the Mets go away. They roll over. They play dead. And tonight they got buried in St. Louis. It was George Hendrick having the big blast here. This one in the, I believe it was the sixth inning. Right, a 4 nothing lead. That's Ed Lynch making the bad pitch. And he hits his first home run since July 3rd. Dave Kingman, his 36th of the year in the ninth, a 3-1 shot. But the Cards move back into first, 6-3. Andrew Hart, the winner. Lynch drops to 3-7. and seven. The other scores, Cincinnati beating in Atlanta. So with Los Angeles' win over Houston, that puts the Dodgers only half game back. Pittsburgh beat Philadelphia today. Montreal three and a half back. They beat Chicago. And San Francisco took San Diego eight nothing after five at least. Yankees started their pennant push about three weeks too late, but they were impressive at home against the Brewers tonight. Impressive. They got 18 hits. Three from Dave Winfield. The biggest one, a three-run homer coming in the second inning. That's his 32nd of the year. About 30 of them coming in the last three weeks. Oscar Gamble got his 16th. 14 to 2 Yankees beat the Brewers. Rigetti goes to 9 and 8. Medich 0 and 7 lifetime against the Yankees. Let's look at the scores. Baltimore moves up a game. They beat Cleveland. Boston over Detroit by 13 3 margin. Seven errors for Detroit. Chicago 2 0 over Oakland. Minnesota lost to Kansas City. California is beating Toronto 4 0 after 5. 5 2 Texas over Seattle. Now one of the newest and biggest residents of New Jersey came out on top today. We may not get to see. There he is. That is Harry Kutsi against Stan Ward. In the second round, 2 10 gone. Kutsi slams a hard right into Ward's cheek. Referee Vinny Renoni is going to step in. Remembers he left the gas on at home. Probably wanted to get home early. Stop the fight. Kutsi moves to 28 and 3. That's sports. Enjoy the Jet game tomorrow. I'll be back. Tons of stuff at 11 on Sunday. Thank you. And we'll see you then. John? Thanks. Well, seafaring spenders are now on board the retired air aircraft carrier USS Intrepid, they're trying to raise money to keep her afloat as a museum. And one of the hands on deck is our Intrepid reporter, Tony Pegnot. That's right, Anna. You know, with a very nice view of the city that doesn't sleep, we are aboard the upper deck of the USS Intrepid, where a big benefit is being held. On the upper deck here, 2,000 people, a lot of celebrities, we're told, are having a good time for a good cause. Now, just a bit down the way here, this is about 300 yards, this upper deck, there's a big band playing the swing sounds, and then we have a disco below us, and that's appropriate because the military museum here represents everything from the space age back to World War II. And James Ian, I guess you've had a few visitors here since you opened back in August. So what have you had coming through here? What type of crowd? Yes, we have, Tony. We've been overwhelmed with the reception. We've had over 175,000 people since August 3rd. And that's pretty good news considering that this was almost turned into scrap. That's true. They, it was uh, scheduled to be scrapped, and we were lucky and we were, saved it. 
Do you know behind us we have some very important people, uh, Dream Girl stars, Jeannie Francis, uh, a lot of people. I do indeed, and uh, I've been thoroughly enjoying them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to enjoy it, and it all goes to the Intrepid. Live from the USS Intrepid, Tony Pagnotti, back to Ralph and Anna. Oh, great night for a party. Yes, it is. Well, we'll be right back. Stay with us. You saw it live here on NBC earlier tonight, the crowning of Miss America 1983. So let's go back to the magic moment once more as host Gary Collins announces the judge's decision. Ladies and gentlemen, our new Miss America is Deborah Sumapin, Miss California. They didn't sing There She Is, but there she is. Deborah Sue Maffet is from Anaheim, California. She's 25 years old, wants to be a professional singer and talk show host. Well, E.T., the little extraterrestrial creature that captured the hearts of every Earthling moviegoer, has never been seen off the screen. But last night, he waddled into the spotlight for his first public appearance. Jim Brown reports from Hollywood. <laughs> Everyone in the Hollywood Bowl last night knew that composer John Williams would be conducting a performance of his music from the film E.T., but what many of them didn't know was that producer-director Steven Spielberg had okayed the creature's first public appearance at the end of the number. This has been something that's been around a lot longer than we have, and, uh, and I thought that, you know, George allowed R2-D2 and C-3PO to appear with the Boston Pops in Boston. Uh, and I felt that this is a nice place to allow E.T. to make his first walk-on, abbreviated walk-on appearance, uh, take a bow and walk off again. As E.T. waddled off the stage, Steven Spielberg remarked, it's like watching your kid at his first recital. Jim Brown, NBC News, Los Angeles. Of course, he phoned home. Right? Good night. <laughs> Good night.